If a couple of years ago you were going to try and decide what the best small sports could be, you used to have quite a simple set of procedures to follow. One, you would try a Porsche Cayman. Two, you would try anything else. Three, you'd decide that the Porsche was the best. Today, things are not quite so simple, thanks to the advent of cars like this, which is the BMW M2 Competition. The Competition bit is new about the M2, it was revised earlier this year, replaces the standard M2. And it brings with it some nose jointing in the rear suspension, bracing in the front, an M3 engine, so it gets more power, slightly stiffer springs and dampers. It's keener, more focused, more responsive, more accurate, more agile, more of all of the things that make a great sports car. And there are also other rivals too, including, but not limited to, the Alpine A110. We've tested an M2 before, we've tested an Alpine before individually, but we have not had them together. However, you can find those videos, among many others, on Autocar's YouTube channel or on autocar.co.uk. If you subscribe, if you turn on notifications, if you like, you'll never miss any. Alpine A110. I've been waiting a very, very long time for this car. Ever since they announced they were bringing back the Alpine brand, I've been super excited about this little thing. And I'm so pleased to be able to say that it's brilliant to drive. So sweet, so satisfying, so much fun. And so off that group of £50,000-ish sports coupes, the two most different are probably this Alpine and the BMW. And when you start looking at the numbers between the BMW and the Alpine, you just think, well, how can they possibly be rivals? How can they possibly sit in the same sector. That BMW has more power, 150 horsepower more. That's a massive number. But this Alpine is lighter by 500 kilograms. That's about the same weight as that mountain over there. It's a huge, huge difference in weight. And what it means is the two cars actually have very similar levels of performance. There's a tenth of a second in it to 62 miles per hour. They both do around about four and a half. And they'll both do 155 miles an hour flat out. But they go about achieving that level of performance in completely opposite ways. Am I completely bonkers by saying this car could beat a Porsche 718 Cayman? I'm not, you know. Now that the Porsche has moved to a four cylinder engine and this retains a straight six, it sounds terrific. The steering is keen. It still doesn't feel as light as it came. It doesn't feel as light as the Alpine A110, which has a truly, truly world-class chassis. But there really is an accuracy to its steering now. It's very easy to place. It's very responsive. All right, the ride is still on roads like this a little bit. There's quite a lot of vertical movement, but it's quite well planted. I think Alpine deserve so much credit for the approach they decided to take with this car. It's a custom, purpose-built platform. This car's got its own body shell, its own monocoque, aluminium as we know. That's not a cheap thing to do. That was an expensive decision to make, but they made it anyway. And they've pursued lightness obsessively, and they've also given it double wishbone suspension, which might just sound like a detail. But actually, it kind of defines the way this car drives. Because of that double wishbone suspension, they've been able to give it very long wheel travel, relatively light springs. They can let the car roll just a little bit in corners. They don't have to try and fight that roll with big, thick, fat, heavy anti-roll bars. And it just means that over a moorland road like this one up in North Wales, which is one of the best roads in the country, I love driving along here, this car feels Fantastic. The Alpine is of a similar ilk. It's really involving, really engaging, really light. Does have a better chassis than this. Has a worse gearbox, has a worse engine. Slight swings and roundabouts kind of thing. This feels like a nicer, classier car, but the Alpine has other things going for it. But anyway, I'll focus on this. The original M2 was good, was enjoyable, had a lot of the characteristics of this car. It felt a little bit more miniature muscle car, if you like. 
whereas this now has had the sports car elements, the, the, the delicate elements, the responsive elements, the engaging, involving, precision elements turned up to the point where we are faced with deciding which is the best £50,000 coupe that does not include a Porsche 718. The combination of ride and body control is exceptional, exceptional. There aren't many cars on sale today that combine ride and body control quite like this one. And if we want to delve into the handling characteristics a little bit further, get a little bit nerdy, what you find is that when you turn into a corner, you get the sense that the car is yawing, that it's pivoting, turning into the corner, at the same rate that it's rolling onto its outside edge. And it's just the most satisfying sensation. You don't even have to be hammering along to be able to enjoy it. There's a really nice balance to the chassis because the drive only goes to the rear wheel, so it just lets the fronts only worry about the steering while the rears only worry about the power and it's got that nice weight distribution. It's just enjoyable at all speeds. I'm not going very fast, but I'm having fun. It's good fun, it's good fun, it's compact. I can see out of it really well. The driving position is terrific, the seats are fantastic. I just love driving this thing along here. It's, it's so satisfying, so rewarding. And you just find yourself pushing harder and harder and harder. The steering is good, it's not exceptional, but it's perfectly decent. And then it feels small on the road and we've got these fantastic bucket seats that give you so much support. I just think this car is superbly well judged and brilliantly executed. It's playful, fun to drive, satisfying, rewarding. You get all those good words, all those good words that highlight a really great performance car, they apply here. I think all that's left to do is for me to have an argument with Matthew Pryor about which of these two cars is better. And when we're making that decision, I don't think we're missing out too much. Porsche has an incredible mid-engine chassis, really terrific, really great steering, feels compact, rides, handles, does all of the things that you should. But there is enough now in these other cars, the BMW and the Alpine, don't forget there's Toyota Supra coming to a lot of cars that can give the 718 Cayman a very, very hard time. What have we learned, Daniel? What have we learned? So I already know that I love this Alpine. I think it's a fantastic yeah. car. Um, what surprised me is how close the M2 got to it. Yeah, that's what shocked me. The old M2, very much a sort of bruiser, and I, mean, I liked it a lot, but slightly sort of small muscle car. But it's so much closer to the A110 than I thought it would be. It's not true. However, I still prefer the Alpine. I do. There's just something about the Alpine. It's somehow a bit more intoxicating, isn't it? It's, it's a proper purpose-built sports car. Yeah. So there you are. The Alpine A110 is the best small coupe you can buy. If you like this, if you want to see it tested against other things, if you want to see loads of cars tested against other cars, Auto car. It's what we do. It's just what we do. Just come back and subscribe. Turn notifications on and then the video man will leave us alone.